Good morning, and thank you for joining us for week six of the 2023 Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference Weekly Football Video Conference. I am Patricia Porter, Assistant Commissioner for the MEAC, and I will be serving as the moderator and host of today's interviews. Before we begin, I'd like to go over today's procedures. The conference will typically begin with the MEAC notes, featuring conference highlights, upcoming games, players of the week, and weekly accolades. Afterwards, we will ask each head coach questions about the previous week's matchups, the upcoming games, followed by questions from the media. To ask a question, simply click the raise hand feature and remain muted until you're introduced. We will now begin our weekly teleconference. We will start this morning with Howard head coach, Larry Scott. Good morning, Coach Scott. Good morning, how's everybody doing? Doing well, Coach, how are you so? Doing well, doing well. Well, Coach, the Bison returned from a bye week with a pretty convincing victory over Robert Morris last week. Talk about the win over the Colonials. It was a big win for us to uh, actually come out of the bye week, um, improve on the things we needed to make the improvements on. Uh, and try to put together a complete ball game, both offense, defense, and in the kicking game. And to go on the road uh, in that type of environment, um, that early of a start 12 kick and those type of things, uh, and, and have the, the success we had um, uh, was pretty good. Uh, we get excited about what we saw and, and definitely excited to continue to build upon that. Well, special teams have struggled in the previous three games, but found their footing last week, including an 88-yard kickoff return touchdown by Ian Wooler. Can you talk about how this area has improved, particularly last week? Yeah, we spent a lot of time with it over the bye week. We wanted to clean up some things and uh, get our personnel right and, and continue to work our technique and fundamentals and doing it the right way. Um, and then that was an area we, went, we really wanted to see the biggest um, improvement in because if we can get that area going, uh, it could definitely be a weapon for us with uh, Ian Wheeler back there returning and Jamar Ebron as our punt returner and different things like that. Those are, those are um, some you know impacts that can be felt uh, within the game and, and on our team that will create an edge for us uh, and you know definitely be an advantage for us if we can get it cleaned up and, and get it going and executing in the right way. So uh, definitely something we wanted to see the improvements in and, and got some of the results of that. Well, looking ahead, this week you take on a two and three Northwestern football program that's coming off a tough loss to Penn State last week. The Wildcats boast wins over UTEP and Minnesota this season. What is your outlook for this pending matchup? Good. I mean, I think um, it's, it's one that we actually started with a little bit yesterday, looking at some of the matchups and looking at where we are um, and, and taking a, a look at them. Um, they're a good Big Ten football team, and you kind of know what you're going to get from that conference. I've had an opportunity to to play them, uh, two former schools that I worked at in the past and, and kind of know a little bit of the brand and uh, a little bit of how they play. Uh, one thing about them, they're going to be consistent. Uh, they're, they're big, they're physical, they're tough. Uh, there's a bunch of smart, you know, they're smart guys and they play, um, you know, they play football and they do some very good things within their schemes and things like that. So uh, it's definitely going to be a challenge for us, but one I think our, our team is excited about, uh, you know, to go to Chicago and, and, and have an opportunity to play against a Big Ten team on the national stage is, is you know, something that every every athlete, you know, in college you know, football player wants to have an opportunity to do. So our guys are excited about it, and uh, I think we're going to go play some really good football. Well, thanks, Coach Scott. That concludes all of my questions. But if I can ask you to remain on the line so that you can ask and answer any questions from the media, as a reminder, please use the raise hand function and remain muted until you're introduced. Our first question comes to you this morning from Nathaniel Hen Henry, Jr., Good, great. Um, Nathaniel Henry, um, Howard University of Sports Media. Um, I have uh, several <laughs> questions. One being, how gratifying, gratifying was it to see uh, the team play a complete game in all three phases? Oh, it was great. I mean, that's that's the thing. That was the focus, right? That was the one thing that we thought was we had been lacking on our first three opportunities, and that we could fill in that small gap and, and bring our special teams along to kind of match how our defense have been playing and, and how our offense has been productive and, and get our special teams going that, um, you know, we can find ourselves being very competitive in every one of our opportunities that we have left. So um, it was uh, truly uh, a step in the right direction. Uh, do we uh, do everything correct? No. Uh, do we still have a lot of things that we can get better at and clean up? Absolutely, we do. And we attacked that yesterday uh, right away with our special teams meetings and, and uh, you know, putting the emphasis on that as we move forward this week. Yes, sir. Appreciate it. Second question. Talk about Darren Brokenburn and what he brings to the team, to the defense. Oh, man. Hey, it was, uh, it was a, a huge team program spark to see him back out there. Obviously, uh, he had been the heart and soul of our defense the last, you know, last year. And 
uh, had that, you know, knee injury and, and kind of um, have been come, coming back and slowly getting back in the fold and getting back to playing football uh, the way that, you know, he's capable of playing. And so to have him back on our front, and, uh, you know, he goes out there and records his first sack of the year and his first one back from the injury. And uh, it, it kind of, you saw what it did to our sidelines and to our team. Uh, they'd all been behind him. They know the, you know, what he had been through to get back to this point and um, to go out there and do that is huge. And then for him to get him back confident and playing the way that he's capable of playing, uh, he's definitely going to continue to make big time impacts for us on the defensive front. Thank you. Um, also, who is Jamal Stewart and was this his best game? Who's that? Jamal, Jamal? Stewart. Oh, yeah. yeah that, that probably. Yeah, we call him Pork Chop. Uh, that's why I'm like, who he, you know, he walks <laughs> on the spot, okay. his nickname around here. But um, yeah, it, it's, it's been a time coming for him. He's been consistent and solid uh, for us all year, but to really kind of play as well as he did this week and see his confidence, you know, you know, go to another level. And like I said, having broken bar back in there kind of helps with that too, because it gets him now freed up in some one-on-one -on -one opportunities and different things like that, where his skill set comes to life. Um, as opposed to being doubled and those type of things. So kind of frees him up, too, to go be what Pork Chop is capable of being. And to see him turn the corner and, and have that type of game is, is not going to do anything but boost his confidence uh, and get him playing at a high level. And if we have him coming like that in three and ten and all those guys coming and playing uh, with that type of confidence, it's, it's going to give us a hell of a chance. Yes, sir. Last question. Talk, talk about the improvement of Aaron Bickerton. Man, I mean, he had a heck of a day. Um, and, 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 you know, we know it's always been there. Uh, and just like anything else, you want to see guys steadily improve and those things steadily come along. Uh, and he had a really good week in practice and, and, and it carried right over to him having a heck of a, you know, heck of a day on Saturday. And we, we kicked the ball really well and uh, gave our guys a chance to cover really well and do all those things. So it, um, proud of him and, and what he's been and what he means to this football team. He's he, he's a character now I and mean, everybody on this team loves A.B., so. It's good to see him have yes, some success. Yes, sir. Appreciate it. Uh, good luck this weekend. Just no question. The next question comes to you from Dr. Kenyatta Cavill. Yes, this is Kenyatta Cavill, Dr. Bill's inside HBC Sports Lab. Good morning, Coach Scott. Good morning. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, great. How you doing, uh, Doc? I'm doing well, and yourself? Congratulations on the... Uh, uh, non-conference win. I wanted to uh, ask you about uh, Ian Wheeler, senior, 5'11", uh, 200-pound, running back from Houston, Texas. He's part of Big Ben HBCU Football of the Year Award winner um, uh, for this week in regards to players that we're looking at for the season. Yeah, I mean, Ian's a, a heck of a, a football player, uh, even better person. Uh, so, you know, he's a graduate. He, he's a kid that's doing medical school interviews week in and week out to go to med school. Um, he, he is the, you know, he, he's the example, right? He's the standard. We, we stood him up yesterday and, and, and in, our, in our team meeting and talked about how he's the standard, both on and off the field, you know, academically of what it means to be a Howard man. Uh, and then the way that he plays, uh, you know, he covers kicks for us. He's our missile on the punt team. He covers punts. He covers kickoff. He returns kicks and he plays out of the backfield. I mean, what this what this young man brings to this team and to this program is 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 tremendous. But he does it in so many different areas um, that epitomizes truly what it means to be a Howard student athlete, um, top to bottom. So excited for him, proud of him, uh, and, and the, the world's going to be his oyster to do whatever he wants to do as he moves forward in life too. So um, yeah, if anybody looks at it and says who's the standard of Howard, you know, Ian Wheeling is is, is our standard. Thank you for that glowing endorsement of Wheeler, as you said. Yeah. No 100 total yards, 81 rushing, 45 receiving on just a couple of uh, plays there. With that being said, uh, Howard is in a unique position to recruit uh, national because of its brand, uh, particularly for its students in general, but even for athletics, unlike a lot of institutions. Uh, with that said, if you would focus a little bit on Texas, uh, mm -hmm. where I'm from out of this area, Houston and Dallas and maybe some other areas, uh, your ability to recruit these areas and some of the players that stand out coming out of uh, Texas beyond Wheeler and uh, how much of his accolades you just sh showcased. Yeah, and I think it's important you know, when you talk about the brand and what you're able to do from a recruiting standpoint. It allows you to go into areas that are football playing areas, you know, where, where young men, you know, play football at a high level. 
uh, year in and year out. They come from winning programs. They come from programs where they've been coached really well. So they have a great base and foundation of good football. Uh, when they walk into, you know, when they walk into the, the locker room and into your campus here. Uh, and then also when you go ahead and you, and you have to go find those kids that fit the academic profile as well, uh, it, it is a it, it is a profile exactly what how it has to have. Uh, a, a young man that loves to play football that comes from elite playing football programs that uh, also have performed very well academically in the classroom and, and socially in, in their character. So, um, you know, when, it, when you have a chance to do that nationally, uh, it gives you a chance to go out and, and find these, you know, these young men that that fit what that profile is. And, and I think it's important to us that we've taken the model that we're going to also go to places where kids love playing football. Um, you have, you know, they love the game and there's a balance with that, right? You can be a really good student, but, you know, play haphazardly when they play football. It's kind of lukewarm uh, about it. But, you know, when you go to areas and allow you to tap into areas like Florida, Texas and places like that where, uh, football is important. Uh, they play it at a high level. They love to compete. They love everything about the game. And they also perform well in the classroom uh, is exactly the profile that we have to have. And, and it fits what it is to be a Howard man. So um, it gives us a chance to do that. And we're going to continue to do that. Quick follow-up question. Last question. Put you on the spot. Florida, Texas, California. Which one provides you uh, athletes uh, above uh, that's that that is a tough one. I mean, because we've done well in all of those areas, but um, right right now, I think you know, talk across the globe, across the scope of everything that we're doing, uh, we've had a bigger impact in the state of Florida. Uh, we're bringing some kids in here um, that you know come from places where I know I know the high school coaches and things very well, so I know what kind of character they're going to come in the door with, uh, just because of previous relationships, uh, because of where I, you know the grounds that I'm used to recruiting, but. Uh, we also have a couple of coaches here on our staff that are from the Texas area that have coached in Texas um, and have those relationships too. So we're able to tap in there. Uh, and that's what we do with our recruiting mostly is, is built on the relationships that we've built over time with guys with our staff and leaning in on people that we trust um, to, to give us great evaluations of the character of these young men, their academics, and them as football players. No problem, Coach. You can stay over there in Florida and come get out the backyard Texas, we would we wouldn't be mad at you. That's no, I'm gonna keep we're gonna keep tapping in. I promise. You. <laughs> good job, Coach. Have a good Thank one. You, bro. I appreciate it, Doc. No problem. Thank you. The next question comes to you from Ty Miller. Coach, good morning to you, Ty Miller from the Power News Radio Network and Black College Football Weekly. How are you? Good, Ty. Good morning. How are you? I'm good, Coach. Northwestern played Penn State tough for a half, and, and that was probably due in part to their intensity at kickoff. So what does Howard have to do to match their intensity when they make take to the field? Yeah, Howard just has to worry about Howard. Now we have to come out and not be our own worst enemy, right? We know we have to come out, uh, play fast from the very beginning. Uh, we've been talking about that we've really done a good job developing our identity. And the only thing that we can is what we control. And that's just to come out playing as good a football as we can from the very start and play it for four quarters to the four zeros left on the clock. Um, that's all that that's all we have to do. We've been talking about just man, it, it ain't it ain't the result necessarily that we're after. We're after the chase. We want to stay in it. We want to win one rep at a time, uh, one play at a time, and just keep our head down and stay in the chase, keep hunting. Uh and so that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna come out of the locker room and we're gonna we're gonna stay in the chase and we're gonna hunt. Uh and then we're just gonna see what we don't at the end, what the result is is what the result is. But um don't worry about those things, just worry about the things that we control, and that's our mindset our preparation, our approach towards it, uh, and how and, and, and how hard and how fast we want to come out playing. So uh, we're just going to control the controllables and come out and, and put forth our best effort. And speaking of control coaching, games like these against Power 5 teams, it's normally a game of attrition. So how do you manage the attrition rate that will take place likely in the second half when you're likely outmanned? Well, you know, out, man, I, I, I hear you. I think that's just pure numbers, right? You're talking like numbers and how depth and, and all those type of things. What we've tried to really do a good job of here uh, is developing that depth where it, it's not that we, you know, run down in the fourth quarter. We're playing a lot of guys. We're playing probably, you know, eight, nine guys on the back end. We're probably playing 10, 11 guys in front. Uh, we're playing four or five linebackers inside. You know, we've got a rotation on our offensive line. Uh, we got a stable of backs that, you know, that we can play at any point in time. Uh, we got a receiving core that, you know, the ball's being sprayed around. We got eight, nine guys having multiple receptions in the game. Uh, so, we, we you know, we've, we've really worked hard to develop our depth 
uh, and, and continue to play all of those guys in all of these games. So then when you start talking about the times that you'd say in the fourth quarter, second half of games, or even the second half of your season, you have multiple guys that have played a lot of snaps and that are ready to go play football for you. So um, in the end, I know most people will say, well, they're probably just, you know, you can go out, be competitive, and they'll probably wear you down. Uh, but the way we've kind of tried to build this was to, you know, force situations like this. Um, and then we're going to go out and just, you know, be who Howard is and put forth our best effort and, and uh, see where we end up in the, in the end. Coach, thank you a whole lot and good luck this weekend. Appreciate you. Thank you, Todd. Well, that concludes all of our media questions, Coach. Thank you for joining us this morning and best of luck to you and the team this week. No problem. Everybody have a great week. See you next week. Thank you. Howard will travel to Evanston, Illinois to take on Northwestern. That game kicks off Saturday, October 7th at 3 p.m. and will be played at Ryan Stadium. The game will broadcast live on the Big Ten Network. Our next interview is with North Carolina Central head coach Trey Oliver. Good morning, Coach Oliver. Good morning. How are you doing? I'm doing well, Coach. How are you doing this morning? I'm well. I'm well. Thank you. Well, Coach, it was an exciting come from behind victory last week as the Eagles defeated Campbell in overtime, forty nine forty eight. Talk about the victory and your team's performance. Well, yeah, it was it was great to be back home. We've been on the road for the past couple of weeks, and uh, for us to be back in the nest and in our home stadium in front of a great crowd. I mean, the atmosphere, the environment was was unbelievable. The fans were engaged, um, but we played a, a very good football team in Campbell. Um, unfortunately, we got down early. Uh, we we had a terrible first half. We were down 35-14. Um, had a quick had a score before uh, halftime to cut it down to a two possession game. Uh, but our guys never gave up. They kept fighting. I thought our coaching staff did a great job with with uh, halftime adjustments. And um, you know we we clawed and fought our way back into the game to give ourselves a chance. Uh, got it. You know tied it up and went into overtime and had an opportunity to win in overtime. But uh, I I can't say enough about our staff. Uh, my coaches are outstanding. Our support staff is outstanding, and um, our players. That uh, I think that was a testament to them, and and um, you know what what North Carolina Central football is about. Well, let's talk about one of those specific players. Davius Richard returned back to the field, garnering five touchdowns in this game, including four on the ground. Can you shed some light on his play and how his performance attributed to the team's win? Yeah, it was good to get him back, and you know when you have a quarterback you know, that, that you have a chance. And, and we definitely have a quarterback. Uh, you know, some stuff that we saw in the run game uh, that we were able to take advantage of. And and um, uh, I thought he did a great job of uh, managing the game. And, and uh, you know, he was he, – for completion percentage, he, you know, he was on point. He did miss a couple throws. He was late with a couple. Uh, two of them should have been intercepted. So um, I think he was a little rusty with that being off for, you know, last week and a half. But uh, – you know, Davies is, 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 I guess, as advertised, but he's, uh, I'm glad we don't have to play against him, but a uh, great, great game, um, can beat you with his feet and his legs. Well, looking ahead, this week you face Elon, who's boasting a three-game win streak, including a 14-6 and six win over fifth-ranked Mar William & Mary last week. What are your thoughts about this pending matchup? Elon's another great program. You know, we played Campbell. They had the number one ranked recruiting class in FCS for the last, I think, two years. Um, and, you know, Elon, they've been, you know, usually top 25 team, but they just beat William and Mary. Uh, they right down the road, probably about 30 minutes away. So um, it'll be a great game. And their coach, uh, <laughs> he's done a great job with those guys there. Uh, we, I know a couple guys on the staff, the defensive coordinator, Coach Edwards was here uh, prior to taking that position. But a uh, great football team. And, you know, it's going to be a, a – a, a tough battle. You know, they got a great running back over there, um, Hampton. He's like Mookie Collier. So it's going to be a physical game this week, and we're going to have our hands full. But, we, you know, we got to come out, and we got to start fast, uh, much much faster than we started this past weekend. Well, thanks, Coach Oliver. That concludes all of my questions. We will now take questions from the media. As a reminder, please use the raise hand feature and remain muted until you're introduced. Our first question comes to you from Dr. Kenyatta Cavill. This is Kenyatta Caville, Dr. Caville's inside of HBC Sports Lab. Coach Oliver, how are you doing this morning? I'm well, Doc. How are you? Doing well. Um, was watching this game in different ways while I was interacting. Obviously, Davis had a chance to show 
about we know all the hype, everything around him, but he was kind of nicked up coming this game and uh, significant opponent, and he got it done, uh, both in the air, on the ground. Obviously, the introduction, you talked about it, so I don't have to go through it that much, but 21-34, 265, 21 carries and 86 yards, just amazing in terms of showcasing the skill. But talk about the big play before half. You go down 35-14, and you get a score before the half to cut it to 35-21. Can you talk about that particular play? I know there was a lot of them big plays throughout the game, but something tells me about scoring before half. What do you think that did for your ball club? Hey, Doc, you watch, you watch the game, man. I appreciate that. A lot of folks come over here, ask questions and everything else like that, but you you pay attention. That was the play of the game. That was the play of the game. And uh, Coach Cord and uh, Coach Sewell, our defensive coaches, Coach McCray, uh, that was a great call. And we, we had a beat on something right there before the half. Uh, we tweaked that. We changed our coverage a little bit. Mm. Jason Chambers uh, drove on the ball and made a great play. And um, I think that was a turning point of the game. You're down three touchdowns. Uh, before the half, that right there cut the lead to to uh, 14. And, um, you know, Jason Chambers, you know, picked it off and set our offense up, offense punched it in, and we had momentum going into the into halftime. So, to me, that was the absolute play of the game. Uh, you know, you coming out halftime down three scores, it's, it's a different ball game. But um, that gave us momentum. The crowd was involved, engaged, and, and um, when we came out of halftime, I challenged you guys at halftime. And uh, they responded. So uh, that, that that was the absolute play of the game. And I appreciate you for, for acknowledging that. I appreciate that, Coach. Uh, trying to work hard at the craft. I see you doing your thing and all the coaches on here. I want to respect that and do the same on my side. Let's move on to the next game, Elon. Um, 3-0 in terms of the Coastal, formerly known as the Colonial. Uh, rival to your rival, a and you talked a little bit about the toughness of, that they bring to the table. Uh, they are three and two overall, but this is another classic matchup for the uh, Central Eagles and the MEAC, for that matter, to step out of conference and uh, maybe make a statement in regards to uh, your program, if anything needs to be made, I'll say that. But talk a little bit about this matchup, particularly what they do on the defensive side. Well, first of all, I think, you know, it's, it's a great matchup, and Elon has a great program. Um Part of my 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 scheduling was I, I want to play, you know, really good football teams. And that's why we scheduled last year the New Hampshire's of the world and you know, Campbell and Elon. Um, I don't want to schedule, you know, cupcake opponents because I want to show people, you know, I want to touch our guys and for us to be nationally ranked, you know, you got to beat really good programs. So um it's a regional game, it's a close game. So, you know, our fans can come see it and it'll be a test. And, you know, if if uh we can figure a way to pull it out. We can again show the world, show the nation, you know, that that we're a very good football team and our program, you know, is trending in the right direction. But um defensively, uh there it starts up front. They have a great defensive line, uh, very active, uh, very athletic. And um their defensive coordinator, Coach Edwards, is, is does a great job as far as scheming and game planning. So uh it's gonna be a great chess match, man. It's gonna be a great chess match. Uh, this will not be checkers this weekend. It's going to be chess. <laughs> Let's get into it. Good luck this weekend. I'll be watching. Yes, sir. Thank you, Doc. Thank you. The next question comes to you from Ty Miller. Hey, Coach Oliver. How are you doing this morning? I'm well, Ty. How are you? I'm pretty good, Coach. Um, all time, Elon has won five times in six games against North Carolina Central. So, uh, you talked about scheduling tough matchups. So what kind of, for this season, measuring stick with this game be? Todd, you talking about five times? I don't know. When was the last time we played Elon? Do you know? It's, uh, I looked at serious history. It's been about seven, eight years. Okay. All right. Because that goes way back when I played. <laughs> so uh, that's that many times, you know, being right down the street, uh, you know, after all these years. But uh, I was not here for, for coaching for those other wins or losses. but. Um, it's it's gonna be a great matchup, Ty. You know, like I said, it's it's all about uh playing good, you know, really good teams. And um we gotta come to play. They are a very, very good football team, uh, well coached, and they're physical. Um their running game is is very similar to ours. Their running back, 
uh, just look, looks, you know, exactly like our running back Mookie. So we got to tackle well. Um, we got to get hats to the football. And um, we can't give them anything. We can't give them cheap scores like we did this past weekend and put ourselves behind the eight ball. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, I know it's going to be a packed house out there in, in um, uh, at their place, but it's, it's going to be a great game, man. And looking at the numbers, Coach, Elon has 848 yards rushing as a team and 744 yards passing offensively. So what, how impressive is their balance on offense to you? It's like us. We're very balanced, you know, and, and for you to have a chance in, to, to win games, and uh, I think you have to be able to run the football. This past, this past weekend, we gave up 300 yards passing, which is, you know, a lot of yards passing. But when you can hold people uh, uh, to, li you know, limit their rushing attempts or rushing rushing yards, you have a chance. But you can't give them both. So uh, we got to stop the rush. we got to stop the rush. So uh, that will be our game plan. And, um, you know, their, their quarterback is very accurate and, and has a strong arm. But uh, we can't give them – uh, the run game and passing game. So we'll we'll do what we can to stop the run, and then uh, our defensive backs understand the task at hand, and we'll get stuff corrected. And I like the, the you know the game the, the in game adjustments we made this past weekend, and um, our DBs will be up to the challenge. So uh, we're excited about it, man. And and you know first and foremost, you got to stop the rush. Also, coach, uh, last question here as a coach. And as as reporters, we try to hit every conference. Well, some of us do it in terms of not only the MEAC, but the other conferences. Do you ever get a chance to hear the other coaches' comments when they are your upcoming opponents? I'm sorry, say that again. Do I hear what? Do you, do you ever get a chance to hear their comments on your team uh, when they are your upcoming opponent? Prior to the game? Yes. Uh, yeah, I usually try to listen to what, you know, coaches' press conference or get notes from um, – uh, what you know, what's happening with their program? Um, you know, a lot of times coach is not gonna say too much about injuries and you know what's going on with it. But uh, you know, whenever you can have an opportunity to to hear the coach talk about their team, you 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 know try to try to hear that or get notes on that. So between myself listening to it or my staff uh, prior to the game, I do uh, post game comments. I could really care less about. And how beneficial have these conferences been? to your school in terms of recruiting, in terms of getting the name out and getting the brand out there? How beneficial has what been? These press conferences. Oh, I, I mean, it, it helps. Uh, you know, uh, obviously this is the world of social media now and you guys do a great job. All you all on here, um, as far as putting our brand out there, uh, you know, putting our players out there and our coaches out there. So giving us exposure and letting, um, Everybody know, you know, how good a ball we play here in North Carolina Central and in the MEAC. So I appreciate what you what you guys do. Y'all do a great job. And um, I hear a lot of positive comments. And, you know, I have, you know, my my, my players, families and parents, they watch these things. So uh, it's, it's good to, for those for the families to be able to be informed and for our alumni to, you know, stay engaged and hear what's happening. All right, Coach. Thank you. And good luck this weekend. Yeah, thank you, Ty. The next question comes to you from Nathaniel Henry Jr. Good morning, Coach. How you doing this morning? I'm well, sir. How are you? Great, great. Um, congratulations on the big win this weekend. I guess I just have one question. I just wanted to know what your policy was in regard to the keeping the team up after a big victory, overtime victory this weekend. To keeping them up after, you know, meeting, keeping them. Meeting, meeting Gardner gets a letdown. You know, a lot of times when the team come off a overtime victory, you have get right. uh team to come out flat the next weekend. And I, I, I know you, I know you're going to keep them going. I just wanted to know how, what your policy is on that. Yeah. Day. Well, you know, that's a great question. They, uh, you know, I don't know how you can get the big head when you were down 35, 14, you know, you're getting blown out in the sure. first half. <laughs> against a very good Campbell team. So I don't know how these guys can walk around here with the big head. Um, and they they don't. They understand. And, you know, it was – it was the thing was – and people ask me, what did I say at halftime? I didn't say much at all at halftime. Before the game, I told our team that this game right here would define our culture and who we are. And, you know, we talk about culture over scheme. Um, that's a long story. We won't talk about that today. But you're playing a great team. Uh, we've had some success. But – how are we going to respond after getting blown out by these people last year? And you're at the house. We're coming out, you know, uh, after a three-game road stretch. So this this game right here, I thought was going to define our culture. 
at halftime we go in and we're down um, and, and played a terrible first half of football, that's all I said to him. I said, guys, I told you all, this is going to define us. And this right here is going to be all about culture. You know, our guys don't point fingers. Um, they don't blame each other. Uh, you know, it's, it's, we got great team camaraderie here and great team chemistry. Our guys love each other. Our coaches, you know, we got, I got a great staff, man. And um, everybody, they, we didn't panic. We stayed locked in and, and we continue to fight. And as long as we got breath in our body, we're going to fight. And that's what we showed Saturday. I appreciate you, Cole. Good luck. Good luck this weekend. Thank you. Yes, sir. That concludes all of our media questions this morning, Coach Oliver. Thank you for joining us, and best of luck to you and the team this week. Hey, Patricia, can I say one thing, please? Yeah. Yes. I got. <laughs> I, I had a staff member, Daryl Perkins. Man, uh, he was in a very serious car accident. Um, very serious car accident. So, if you all would please keep Daryl per Perkins in your prayers. Uh, a uh, staff member with us travels with us every game and uh he's 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 having a rough time right now so if you all would please pray for Daryl. thank you so much for sharing coach and we will definitely keep him and his family and your family the the central family in our thoughts and prayers thank you for thank sharing you. North Carolina Central will travel to Elon, North Carolina to take on Elon this week. The game kicks off on Saturday, October 7th at Rhodes Stadium and will be played at 2 p.m. The game will broadcast live on Flow Football. <clears throat> Our next interview is with Delaware State head coach Lee Hull. Good morning, Coach Hull. Good morning. How are you doing? I'm doing well, Coach. How are you doing this morning? Uh, good, good. It's, 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 it's great to get a win. So it makes Sunday, Monday mornings, game plan and stuff uh, a lot easier. Absolutely. Well, coach, it was a challenging start to the season, but the Hornets have been able to notch that first win of the season last week and over the University of Virginia Lynchburg. Talk about your team's performance in the matchup. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it didn't start off very well for us, you know, um, we, we killed ourselves, you know, the biggest, biggest thing for us is, you know, our, our going into the game was um, keys of victory. We do keys of victory every, every day. I mean, every week um, was the first one was not to beat ourselves. And we, and we did that in the first, first uh, half, you know, it was, it was a tale of two halves in the first half. We had eight penalties, which is unacceptable. Um, and then the second half, we only had one. Um, so that, that kind of, um, was the biggest difference in the, in the first half is, is that we had too many penalties, stop drives um, on defense, gave those, those guys good field position, um, came out in the second half and, and, and settled down, um, you know, scored uh, 30, 34 unanswered points, something like that. Um, but it, it was it was a complete game, you know, um, all three phases, you know, uh, defense scored uh, a touchdown, you know, Ramel Harris had a, had a pick's had a pick six, um, you know, special teams, you know, Raheem Smith had had a punt return for a touchdown, a kickoff for a touchdown. So uh, so it was a complete game and in, in all around all three phases. Well, Coach, as you mentioned, it was a tell. It was a tale of two halves. That second half, however, the team seemed to be clicking on all cylinders, both offensively and defensively. You mentioned the special team. Your kicker, Nathan Wilson, was perfect, nailing six of six point after attempts and two of two field goals. Can you talk about the play of your kicker? Yeah, you know, we we were struggling a little bit in the beginning of the year, um, trying to find out who would be who would be the kicker. Um, Nate has done a great job in, over these last last few games so that that helps us now you know once, once we get into the red zone if we stall you know <clears throat> now we we have confidence that we can go ahead and kick field goals so um you know hats off to him because you know he, he's done a great job of um working hard you know keeping his head down not not getting uh um down on himself because he missed a couple early early on in the season so right now you know he, he's in a good good frame of mind so we just got to kind of keep him that way well, looking ahead, this week you take on Central Connecticut State during their homecoming weekend. As like DSU, the Blue Devils enter this matchup with only one win on the season. What will be the keys for Delaware State to get the victory in this week's matchup? You know, the biggest thing is is, is don't beat ourselves. You know, that that's what we talked about. You know, stupid penalties, um, stalling drives. Just don't beat ourselves. Just just everybody just do their job. And I and I think they're 
they're starting to get that. Um, you know, we 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 got we got to start fast and 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 finish strong. I know that's kind of cliches a little bit, but but it's it's true. We we you know we haven't really started fast. And what I mean by starting fast is you know first drive. You know, on offense, let's let's go down and, and score. Defense, you know, three and out. Let's start. Let's start fast and and just just finish. And um, just don't have stupid penalties. Um, you know, we 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 just been not disciplined enough for me in my liking. So we you know um, with with the penalties. So um, just don't beat ourselves. That's that's going to be the biggest key. Well, thank you, Coach Hull. That concludes all of my questions this morning, but if I can ask you to stay on to, to take on any questions from the media, as a reminder, please use the raise hand feature and remain muted until you're introduced. Our first question comes to you from Dr. Kenyatta Cavill. This is Kenyatta Cavill, Dr. Lewis, inside the HBC Sports Lab. Good morning, Coach Hull. Hey, good morning, Doc. Good, appreciate it. I know going into the, uh, this matchup uh, on last Monday's call, we talked about the need for the team to execute the game plan and the plays that you've been working through this season. Um, sound like there were maybe a little concerns, at least early in that matchup. But overall, how do you think your team was able to execute the game plan and not get outside of itself? I think they executed the game plan um, well. It wasn't the execution of the game plan. It was the penalties. You know, we 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 were killing ourselves. Once we we moved the ball down the field, that that really hasn't been the issue. It's just now once we get towards the red zone, and uh, I'm talking about offensively. Um, you know, they, they, we made mistakes. You know, this time it was, you know, um, you know, our center had two two didn't snap the ball twice, and we had a we had a young center in, and we and we had we had played a, a few young guys to try to get them some experience. Um, you know, in, in in the first half, you know, we were trying to do uh, a couple of different lineups, especially on the offensive line. And it, we're still trying to find, you know, who that five it are. Um, so I don't. I, I think we executed the game plan. It was it was no difference from the first half to the second half in the execution of the game plan. It's just that it was the penalties that 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 killed us. Um, and we had, like I said, we had eight to one, you know, in in, in the half. So. Um, you know that way, and then de and de defensively, you know, um, you know, we had Ramel had a had a, a, a another pick. He had two he had two picks, but he had another one one handed, but that got called back because of, of a penalty that I think we were inside the ten yard line. He ran all the way down to the to like to, like the ten yard line that killed us. So I thought, and 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 we gave up a couple big plays early um, on defense, but then we settled down after that. Um, you know that that one scoring drive that they had. So um, I I feel that we're executing our game plan. It's just again we we just got to stop beating ourselves with dumb penalties. Thank you, Coach. That provided a much better perspective. Uh, absolutely, putting up two hundred total of four hundred forty nine yards, two hundred one rushing. I mean, two hundred one passing and uh, forty eight rushing, as you alluded to. On to Central Connecticut. Um, although they lost to Brown, uh, the running back Elijah Howard they able to put up 146 yards on 16 carries, including a long 82. And total, they rushed for 235 yards. So it seems like they'll uh, seek to rush, run the ball. What are your thoughts in terms of your defense uh, seeking to stop Central Connecticut, specifically in terms of their ability to run? Yeah, that, that's going to be the key on defense. we got to stop the run. Um you know, the running back, you know, as you alluded to, ran, you know, ran for over hundred and something yards. And he's he and he's got legit speed. So he's he's got he's a track kid um that that's playing football. So he's got legit speed. So we're we're gonna have to get to him. We're gonna have to wrap him up. Um, you know, we can't miss tackles. That was one thing that we didn't do um this past week is we didn't miss a lot of tackles. So we've been that would been a big emphasis, but this week is gonna be very important. That when we get to him, we got to wrap him up. Um, we got to be gap gap sound, and we got to gang tackle because he is he is very fast. Um, you know, because you, you do you do want to stop the run, make them throw the ball a, a little bit. Um, you know, their, their their quarterback is good, but you know he will throw throw a couple to you if if you get some pressure on him. So it's it's, it's important that we do stop the run game. Thank you, Coach Ho. Good luck this week. Thank you. 
That concludes all of our media questions this morning. Thank you for joining us this morning, Coach Hole. Best of luck to you and the team this week. Uh, thank you. Delaware State will travel to New Britain, Connecticut to take on Connect Central Connecticut State. The game kicks off Saturday, October 7th at Arute Field and will be played at 1 p.m. Our next interview is with Norfolk State head coach Dawson Odoms. Good morning, Coach Odoms. Good morning. How are we this morning, Coach? Uh, we we go get better. We go get better. <laughs> We've had better days. We had worse days, but it's all going to be good. Absolutely. Well, Coach, it was a gut-wrenching loss last week as the Spartans fell two points shy of sending the game into overtime against North Carolina a &T. What are your thoughts on last week's matchup? Well, it shouldn't have came down to that. Uh, when you watch the film and um, inconsistent, and that's been our trend is that just trying to get these – young guys to play consistent football and at, at times we play immaculate and then at times we play um cover your eyes you don't want to see it but it's just the inconsistency of that roller coaster that we're on and you got to start fast you you know you got to you got to put yourself in a position to to execute consistently and that's what that's where we struggle but the biggest thing is is that we understand we have a competitive edge to us that they're going to compete that. Okay. Check that box off. Now we got a bye week. So we'll get a lot of guys back. Uh, we, we went into that, went into that game with some, with some linemen out. Uh, but overall, one thing I told the guys is that your competitive spirit cannot be questioned. Uh, Y'all some fighters. Now we got to figure out how to fight from start to finish, get some more ammunition in the gun, and now we'll be able to to start games and finish games. And we get a lot of those guys back after this bye week. Well, Coach, by the numbers, the Spartans led in most of the categories on the stat sheet last week. However, there is that one number that jumps out has proven to be challenging for NSU this season, and that's the rushing defense. How has this impacted the, the overall season and what adjustments can be made moving forward? Well, it's always who and what. You know, I always think that's the challenge when you're when you're trying to make some adjustments. And, you know, we only we only had um, we dressed out some guys, but 70 linemen. And, you know, that's tough in a football game. And I think when you look at us from from the Temple game, you're starting to see that there's a different lineup. And then you come out and you see some other guys in stretch lines that are not there. So the depth. Uh, allows teams to wear us down and you know we're not the biggest team and just looking at what we're doing and how we can go about putting those guys in better position and making our plays but uh, I think after this after this bye week we get we get our big guys back and we wanted to make sure as we get ready to go into conference play we got to be healthy and that's one of the things that playing this tough non-conference schedule you lose guys early but you get a chance to get them back as you get closer to uh to conference play and, and we're excited about this bye week much needed and be able to address some issues that we have and we'll be a different team coming out the bye week well coach you've mentioned it this week you are open and the overarching theme that you mentioned has been getting those players back healthy but what else is a focus of the bye week well playing consistent football uh, executing and, and really getting getting these guys on the same page for 60 minutes and just holding our focus and just putting our finger on, you know, why there is a lack of focus or why we have lows in the football game. But uh, I think we play with anybody on our schedule. And any given Saturday, we can beat anybody. And just like any given Saturday, you can be beat. And you can see that throughout college football. You you can't understand it. Uh, trying to figure it out, uh, you lose a lot of sleep over it. But I think at the end of the day, it's just figuring out what you're good at and then fixing the things you're not good at. And we just have to be on the same page and seeing what that looks like. Well, thanks, Coach Odoms. That concludes all of my questions this week. We will now take questions from the media. As a reminder, please use the raise hand feature and remain muted until you're introduced. Our first question comes to you from Dr. Kenyatta Cavill. Go ahead, Dr. Cavill. Thank you. Uh, this is Kenyatta Cavill, Dr. Cavill, inside the HBC Sports Lab. Good morning, Coach O. Good morning, Dr. Cavill. Good to speak with you. Intriguing game in terms of the matchup. Obviously, a third 
third quarter, they were able to pull away. Uh, then you made a valiant comeback. Um, and as was alluded to, the two-point conversion fell short. Uh, talk about the fight in your team um, that they just continue to push forward. Where does that come from uh, in terms of your nature or what things do you do to make sure your team continues to fight no matter what's going on? Well, I think they just believe. They believe in the process that we have in place. And we we understand and they understand that as long as it's time on the clock, you got a, you got a chance. You always got a chance in a football game. And what we're trying to convey to them is why, why have to use that? You know, why have to rely on chance when you are a very good football team? And that's the part of playing consistent football that we're trying to – convince our players of and give them to understand that. And this bye week is going to help us to, to mm-hmm. grow in that area because, you know, we have some good players. Uh, we have, we have some things that we weren't able to, to address because you needed a bye week. You need more time to address certain issues. Now that we have time, we're going to be able to address some issues before we get the conference play. And uh, we, like I told them, it, it's still, everything's in front of you. So let's not forget that. And let's believe we're a good football team. Let's practice like we're a good football team. But our age is our calling. And I just think that's trusting the process and understanding that as long as time on the clock, we got a chance. At least right into my follow-up question, Coach, in terms of this bye week. Um, seemed very effective in terms of running the ball. Um, uh, but there's some concern in terms of stopping the run, as was alluded to uh, but at the beginning of the interview. But can you go into the – some deep uh, or details, if you would. I know you won't give the secret to the sauce, but you alluded to having more time to really go and dissect uh, what's taking place. Can you provide us some context of how you go about doing that? It's why we? Well, evaluating. Uh, evaluating what you're doing, how you're doing it, and then evaluating uh, the time you're spending on it and, and really look at schematically and then look at the individuals and see how you can put them in better position or are they in position and not making the play? And if they're not in position, how can we get them in position and and look at some, some strengths and weaknesses of what you've done uh, through the first five games and be able to say that don't work. This is something we got to throw out. This is something we can add in, but you got time to rep it. You got time to just say, you know, let's work on run fits and get better at those run fits. Uh, because stopping the run, if you if we do it, we win football games. When we don't, we lose football games. And it's a simple recipe. And I think everybody knows we can run the football. And it don't matter who we play against, we're gonna be able to run the football. Now it's all about getting our defensive guys to understand that we gotta be able to stop the run. And that comes with attitude, that comes with with growth, that comes with uh upperclassmen, that come with strength in the weight room. Uh, but this year we gotta be able to figure it out today, and that's what our emphasis is on. Uh, what we can do to help our guys and put them in better position uh, through the evaluating process to see how we can play better run defense. Cause right now it's uh, we're, we're not stopping anybody. Understand. Appreciate you coach. Thank Look you forward to the following week with your next matchup. Appreciate you. There are no additional media questions at this time. Coach Oldham's. Thank you for joining us this morning. Thank you. Behold the green and gold. The Spartans are open this week, but will take on Tennessee State in their next matchup. That game kicks off Saturday, October 14th at Hale Stadium in Nashville, Tennessee. The game will kick off at 6 p.m. and will broadcast on ESPN+. Our next interview is with South Carolina State head coach Buddy Pugh. Good morning, Coach Pugh. Good morning, Patricia. How are you? I'm doing well, Coach. How are you? Good. Well, Coach... Last week, it was another break for the Bulldogs. Can you talk about how South Carolina State used that bye week and what areas were you able to focus on? Yeah, we've had two bye weeks. Uh, the fact that we played week zero gave us a little bit of an early start. So it's a little bit strange having that many, many uh, open dates uh, prior to the real start of your season. But it's been all good. Uh, we needed the break. Uh, we gotten banged around a little bit and had some guys injured and uh, needed to kind of work uh, – uh, I guess, back toward the preseason style kind of practice in some regards to give ourselves a chance to kind of grow a little bit. So we've done those things. Um, we've had some time off. We've had an opportunity to uh, uh, to rest some. And, uh, you know, we're ready now for the stretch and run. 
This is uh, the beginning of a seven-week stretch of, of games for us now. And uh, we open up with Virginia Lynchburg at home. It's youth day for us. It's a big promotional day for us. It's almost like a second homecoming. We'll have kids running around here all over the place. And, uh, you know, it's a good time to uh, – you know, to get going again that way. So we're excited about the game this weekend and looking forward to bringing Virginia Lynchburg in here this coming Saturday. Well, Coach, as you mentioned, we're going to be looking forward since we have all those bye games behind us, those bye weeks. But this week you will face Virginia University of Lynchburg. The Dragons are still looking for their first win of the season. What is the outlook for this matchup? Well, I hope they don't find it this week out down here because the last thing we need is for them to come down here and hang one on us. And then, Coach Tim and Newman's outfits it, it pretty much improved. I, I guess you saw where, you know, they held Delaware in the first half to uh, to no scores, I think, on offense, which was, you know, a little bit of an issue for us. And, uh, you know, we need to make sure that we get going fast because these guys have a vast improved from the way they were last year. And they give you a chance to, you know, to have a little pain. So we, we need to make sure that we, you know, have a good plan in place to get these guys you know, going on a, to get us going on a good, strong note uh, early. Well, thanks, Coach Pugh. That concludes all of my questions this morning, but we will now take questions from the media. As a reminder, please use the raise hand feature and remain muted until you're introduced. The first question comes to you from Dr. Kenyatta Conville. Go ahead, Dr. Conville. Thank you. Kenyatta Conville, Dr. Conville's inside the HBCU Sports Lab. Good morning, Coach Pugh. Hey, Dr. Cavill, how are you this morning? I'm doing well. I wanted to ask you more of a philosophical question in terms of game planning. DU Lynchburg obviously played Delaware State last weekend. Uh, how much do you have your players watch that film, or do you do more about just continuing to do the work and sch schemes and schematics that you want your team to do, whether it's defense, offense, or special teams? Well, you do a little bit of both. We Our guys definitely see – all of the game tape, and uh, they see some of these games live. You can see those games, most of them, on the uh, ESPN network. So they get a chance to see them as they play, uh, along with the fact that, uh, you know, that we give them, give them an opportunity to see pretty much all the game film. And you get guys, some guys who don't watch much tape. You know, we show them some tape ourselves, but you see some guys who watch a lot more tape than what we show them, and it's out there in our, on our film network. So. Uh, you get a guy who wants to get a little bit of an edge. He wants to really get into a bunch of tape that way. And then some guys, you know, they want to try to just get out and play. So um, I think you'll see a little bit of both. But at the same time, uh, uh, all film is 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 needed. And I look, I want to get all the, all the information I can as far as being able to see uh, uh, out my upcoming opponents. Certainly, I appreciate that. On that same Vane obviously got off to a tough start. We got the big home victory uh, a week and a half ago. Talk about the need to go in this game, push through, get a victory if you would, uh, but building the momentum as you start to get prepared for conference play. Well, you're exactly right. The game this past week, well, a week and a half ago now, was, uh, uh, I mean, a tremendous lift, uplift to our overall psyche that way. Our team, our practices uh, were a lot more spirited, and uh, you get a lot more excited about just being here. Um, Football is a tough game when you're getting beaten up, and it's sometimes tough when things are going well. Uh, practices are hard. We practice early in the morning. There's a lot of stuff going on that time of the day that, uh, you know, that you, you don't necessarily want to be involved with, <laughs> especially weightlifting and running and all kind of stuff. So, you know, you got to make sure that you, know, that you find ways to keep your guys excited because, you know, it is not easy. Good point. That'll do it for me. Good luck this week, Coach. Thanks, Doc. Well, thanks, no Coach Pugh. There are no additional media questions. Best of luck to you and the team this week. Thank you so much, Ms. Porter. Pugh, you have a good day. Thank you. South Carolina State will host Virginia University of Lynchburg. That game kicks off Saturday, October 7th at the Oliver C. Dawson Stadium in Orangeburg, South Carolina. The game will kick off at 2 p.m. and will broadcast on ESPN+. Our next interview is with Morgan State head coach Damon Wilson. Good morning, Coach Wilson. Good morning. How are you doing? I'm doing well, Coach. How are you doing this morning? 
We're working. We're working. <laughs> okay. Well, Coach, not the performance you would have wanted last week as you faced Yale in the NAACP Harmony Classic. Can you talk about the matchup? Uh, yeah, Yale is a very good football team. And uh, Morgan State football, we didn't show up to play a whole game. You know, we started off and had a chance to go into halftime just down seven. And uh, we ended up throwing an interception, gave them opportunity to score, you know, to increase the uh, lead before the half. And I think that's that second half. I mean, it's just they got rolling and we couldn't get anything going. Um, in order to win football games, several coaches already mentioned it. You got to stop the run, uh, number one. And number two, you got to be able to run the ball. Uh, we've been doing a good job thus far stopping the run. Uh, but we haven't done a good job running the ball. So we're still working uh, on, on that offensively. And uh, we have to eliminate the st mistakes we made defensively because uh, we gave up grounds, on, air, the grounds in the air and on the ground. Gave up yards. Coach, arguably, this team is much better than its record. <laughs> because of that perspective, this team can be a potential nightmare for any opponent that you face week in and week out. And as much, what do you see are those critical areas that are separating this team from its wins and its losses? Uh, you're, you're right. You're right. I think we have a, a, a team that definitely is uh, more competitive than what we showed this past weekend. Uh, the biggest thing we must have must do is play consistent. You know, just be just play consistent. It's talk about running the ball and stopping the run. Uh, do all the little things right throughout the course of the week. Or some things that we talk about, uh, and and also you're still working to change the mindset. You know, like once again, we haven't had success here at Morgan in some years here, and it's important to uh, kind of change the mindset with the current, the new players as well as some of the old guys that's been here uh, to understand that hey, it's not okay just to be in those games. We want to win those games now. And uh, we played a very non, a tough non-conference schedule. Got another one coming up this upcoming week um, that we have to prepare for. And, and they, they showed up to work yesterday. So that's one thing that uh, I can't say about the guys. They're showing up to work. They're working to get better. Had a good day on the field yesterday. Uh, so we look forward to get back out there tomorrow morning. Well, looking ahead, this week you sort of face a similar opponent that shares a similar trait as this team, as that they are probably and potentially better than their record. And that's Stony Brook. Well, the Seawolves enter the matchup 0-5, including a lopsided loss to Maine in their last matchup. How do you prepare prepare for this team who is looking to pick up their first win this season, this week? Like you said, it's a good team. Uh, they've had a very uh, tough road uh, at the beginning of the year. It's a team that beat us by last second field goal last year. Um, so I think they, they're up in the in the head-to-head -head matchup 1-0. to zero. So it's important for us to win the ball game. It's homecoming for us. So it's important to eliminate any distractions, but understand this is not a regular 0-5 team. This is a very competitive, very good football team uh, that had some success uh, this past week. Just the scoreboard was uh, a little lopsided, but they did some good things offensively and defensively. Well, thank you, Coach Wilson. That concludes all of my questions. We will now take questions from the media. As a reminder, please use the raise hand feature and remain muted until you're introduced. Our first question comes to you from Dr. Kenyatta Cavill. Go ahead, Dr. Cavill. Good morning, Coach Wilson. How you doing, Doc? I'm doing well. Wanted to get in a little more about the philosophical process that you talk about, about changing the culture um, after a tough start. Really got off well, got a big win. Looked like you were upon the win, um, and things didn't go quite your way and got away from you. Looks like you're still trying to bounce back from that, maybe in some ways, mentally and culturally. Can you talk about what do you do as a coach of your program uh, beyond the X's and O's to work through that process of changing the culture? You said the students are bought in, but what does it mean in terms of the mindset to the team to play with to understand? Like you said, we don't want to just play close, we want to get uh, the victory coming out of these matchups. You have to keep hammering away, you know, keep showing up to work every day. Uh, we do, a, I do a lot uh, of uh, of self-reflection as well as getting those guys to do the same uh, as student athletes, understand what you could do differently, what you could have done better, uh, understanding the, the importance of doing the little things right. Uh, we, we talk about that as a staff. We had a great conversation uh, yesterday, you know, just providing positive, uh, uplifting words, uh, no negative talk. Uh, I mean, we're at that level with it. You know, I think once we beat Richmond, uh, some people thought uh, we, had, we had made it. And, uh, you know, we're far from that <laughs> at that point. <laughs> but, uh, you know, we had, I think we received the FCS team of the week and got an award for that. And, you know, I think some people were really excited thought the season was over. However, we have a lot of football ahead of us and a lot of good football teams still left on the schedule. So just getting them to understand that, uh, like, an award hasn't been given to Morgan State football in a while. 
You know, so when they received that award that first week, I think some guys really thought we were we were there. Uh, but as we we've learned, we're not any we're not close yet. Uh, but we're heading in the right direction. Great point. We are, are talking about young adults. Uh, as a professor on this side, have students do really well on their first test, and, and uh, I'm excited for them. But then they kind of step back and say, hey, "You got to." keep doing the work that you did that allowed you to get the success Correct. on that first yep. test. So I certainly can relate that and understand that. Follow-up question, let's get in to Stony Brook. Uh, it was alluded to that obviously they're 0-5, but they're playing some uh, pretty good football stretches. But the inconsistency that you talk about, similar to your program, uh, what components of this matchup, particularly what they do on offense, do you want to see your defense get done, which has kind of carried your team in a lot of ways this year? We've got to get off the get off the field on third down. You know, this this is a team the quarterback can spread the ball around a little bit. I want to say he threw off uh, threw for over three hundred yards this past week against Maine. Uh, so we have to once again stop the run and make them one dimensional. Uh, and then when we do that, we got to make plays on the back end. Uh, something we didn't do a good job of this past week at, at times. So I know they have film to watch and, yeah. and they're going to see some of the mistakes uh, that we made. Hopefully, we get some guys back health wise. Uh, but, you know, if not, next man up. You know, it's something we talk about as well. Uh, the game's going to be played at kickoff time. We've got to be ready to play. Uh, so, you know, so once again, make make sure, make a one-dimensional, uh, stop the run, and also be in position uh, in their pass game. Yeah, it's back at home, so that's a good thing. Look forward to the matchup. Thank you, yes, Coach Lewis. Indeed. The next question comes to you from Kayla Sweezy. Go ahead, Ms. Sweezy. Hi, Coach. How are um, you doing, Kayla? Good, how are you? Good. With this weekend being homecoming, it encourages us to think about the rich history of Morgan State football. What are some things that you're doing to ensure that the new players, whether it be transfers or freshmen, are really buying into this and understand the importance of the teams before them? Uh, we, we talk we talk about it. Uh, we bring in, actually, we had Mark Washington uh, speak to the team the other day who was a Morgan alum who played several years in the National Football League. We bring guys back to the program to express, uh, uh, you know, their, their 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 thoughts of when they played here at Morgan. Uh, we, we also had the guys do projects throughout the uh, training camp to talk about the rich history, the championship teams, uh, Coach Banks, Coach Hurt. We talk about those guys so they understand that they have a, opportunity and, and it's a privilege uh, to play here and it's our responsibility as a ball club to make sure we think those guys that, that laid the foundation down before us and homecoming is a great opportunity to do that. Thank you and good luck this weekend. Yes ma'am, thank you. The next question comes to you from Ty Miller. Coach Wilson, good morning to you. How are you? Good Ty, but so I'm good, Coach. Just got one question for you. You mentioned uh, Casey Case, uh, Stony Brook's quarterback. He's six six. What kind of problems that does a big frame like that at quarterback pose for your team? Well, you know, he, he can hurt you in the run game. You know, you got to get all 11 hats to the ball. You can't just uh, assume one person is going to bring him down. Uh, that's something that uh, we, we, we were doing pretty good before this past weekend uh, when we let the quarterback rush for over 80 yards. Uh, so, you know, that's something we're going to get back to to talking about. We already started talking about it, but now we'll get back uh, tomorrow to making sure we focus on getting 11 hats to the ball to get him on the ground. Thank you, Coach, and good luck this weekend. Yes, sir. Thank you. There are no additional media questions this morning, Coach Wilson. Thank you for joining us. Best luck to you and your team this week. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Morgan State will host Stony Brook on Saturday, October 7th at Hughes Memorial Stadium in Baltimore, Maryland. The game kicks off at 1 p.m. and will broadcast live on ESPN+. Plus. That concludes this week's MEAC Weekly Football Coaches Video Conference. Before we end the video conference, the MEAC would like to thank everyone that assisted and participated this morning. The MEAC would also like to thank its corporate partners for their continued support and the of the conference and its elite eight member institutions. As a reminder, the next video conference is Monday, October 9th at 10 a.m. For more information on MEAC football or other sponsored sports, Visit MEACSports.com and follow the MEAC on social media at MEAC Sports on Facebook, X, Instagram, TikTok, and Threads. Thank you for tuning in to this week's MEAC Weekly Football Coaches Conference and have a great football week.